what, what do you think of this? Well, person? first of all, um, I have always been in contact with him as a, as a superior. Yeah. But he was always very friendly. And one thing you, uh, that I realized, and all of the others who were in contact with me realized that he trusted the, the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. Well, he trusted other people also, but I mean, especially the Jesuits that he had some responsibility for. He trusted their, well, he didn't always agree with them, but he, but he, he, he knew that, or believed that they were honest with him. That, and not trying to deceive him or tell him things which would move him in this way or that way. So he, uh, it, one of his basic principles, he even said this to, to people, that he trusted the men for whom he was responsible. In other words, if they told him something, he believed it because they're being, he believed that they're being honest with him. Mm. It's not always so, but anyway, he believed it. Mm. And so uh, he was accused of being too lenient mm. sometimes. In other words, Jesuits who were doing something which is obviously wrong, but he would, He would be careful about judging them and punishing them. Uh, and he was criticized for that also. He's too, he's too lenient. He should be more strict. <laughs> that was part of his personality, mm -hmm. his way of, of dealing with Jesuits. So he was loved very much by uh, by many people, but the Jesuits especially, many loved him. Mm -hmm. I would ask you about this question. Um, what was the most memorable thing about Father Amrupin's like, way of his life? Like, um, memorable yes, well, for one, he spent a lot of time praying. Mm -hmm. In other words, he would be just silent by himself, and he liked to he liked to uh, pray in the seiza position, not not zazen, but the seiza where he put the legs back. He he often prayed, but he would pray for a long time. I remember when I went to I was called to Rome for a kind of orientation when I became provincial, and. <coughs> During that time, we, uh, together with Father Rupe, we lived in a different place outside of Rome. <coughs> and uh, because of the change of time, I, I know one night I couldn't, I couldn't sleep, and I was about 4 o'clock in the morning. And so I, I can't sleep, so I'll get up and, and I'll go to the chapel myself and pray. And, when I went there, he was already there praying. It was about, certainly not, it wasn't five o'clock yet in the morning, it was for about four, thirty or so. And uh, it was not something, he didn't have to be up at that time, but he, he would spend, um, even though he's very busy, he would spend quite a bit of time praying just by himself. And that, that impressed me very much. Also, he was, he was quite, uh, he, he didn't eat very much. <laughs> That's my impression. He ate less than I do. <laughs> but, uh, How about like, um, what was the most important and like um, memorable lesson that you learned from Father mm -hmm. Well, what well, uh, the most important or like memorable lesson? Ah, uh, yes. 
Well, there was not uh, it was not any one point, as it were, but he trusted me, and he and he liked me. I knew that, mm -hmm. and it was very comfortable to be with him. And he, uh, when I was uh, the provincial superior myself, he encouraged me very much. I remember especially one time, oh this was before, when I was not yet provincial, but I was studying engineering in the States at that time. Uh, I was back for two or three years to begin the, my study in electrical engineering. And I was finding it pretty difficult because I had been away from it for a long time. And I was in my late 30s already. I was, and my fellow students were mostly young 20 year olds, uh, well, I mean, over 20, between 20 and 30. And I find it great difficulty. And so uh, I wrote to him, well, just kind of complaining. <laughs> you might say crying like a baby. <clears throat> and uh, so I immediately got an answer from him. And I could see from the letter that he had typed it himself, not by a secretary or anything. And uh, he must, um, in my imagination, he must have stayed up late at night to write that letter back to me. And uh, so that impressed me very much that he was. He could have written, wrote back to me, stop crying and go ahead. <laughs> but he was more gentle than that. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, do you mind if I ask you to show us the book that you brought with you? This? Yeah, I, I just wanted to, I'll, I wanted to know what that is, what's that book is about. What this book is about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, um, we you see, new contributions for his biography. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, these are people who are, knew him, very close to him, or who in some way knew about him. And each, they wrote essays, um, something like this conversation we're having. They wrote about different aspects of his life. Mm -hmm. and, and they're all people who, uh, in one way, uh, came in contact with him. So I, I, I had not read it before, but preparing for this talk, I read not all of it, but parts of it. And so it's a very, very good book. And of course, a lot of it is, if you were not a Jesuit and didn't know much of the background, you would find it maybe a little, no. Not uninteresting, but sort of baffling, hard to mm. understand. But the, the, the first section is his life. Uh, and that is, that is very good. It's about um, 50 pages or so in this book. There are other books about him. Uh, one that was written much earlier, uh, similar to this, uh, different. Jesuits who had known him well wrote their uh, essay about him. So if you, <clears throat> if you read this book, it would be, uh, I wouldn't say read all of it, <laughs> but uh, so selectively read it because there are four, I don't know, how many, about six or seven different essays. Well, anyway, the, uh, these are the contents. Now, each one of these, uh, 
For instance, there are two general congregations which were held while he was the general superior. Well, there uh, much of that would be rather technical in a way. It was, if you were not a Jesuit, it would be hard to understand what the problem is. <laughs> but uh, the first part is The introduction? No, not the introduction, but the oh. presentation. This one, introduction. Huh. It's really a, a short life of of uh, Arupa. You can see from four, page 14 to page 43, so that's a considerable mm -hmm. number of pages. Mm -hmm. I think this is even on Amazon. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so, someone told me it's on Amazon. You can even get it on Kindle. Huh? <laughs> oh, thank you for telling me that. One last question. Well, last question for me. Um, if you were to meet him again, what would you like to tell him? I'd like to tell him. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank him for because. <coughs> He, uh, well, first of all, for coming to Japan and, and for uh, following the star, as it were. In other words, even his coming to Japan, his ambition to come to Japan, was kind of a dream also. In other words, he, he didn't really know much about Japan, mm -hmm. uh, but he felt al already when he was a, a young Jesuit, he felt that he was called to go to Japan. I think his, uh, his knowledge of St. Francis Xavier had much to do with it, but, uh, but that in itself didn't uh, orient him to Japan. But I would like to ask him more about that. And, uh, and also about his uh, love of the heart of Jesus, his personal relationship to Jesus, and ask him. I've read things that he wrote which are very, very good, but I'd like to hear him tell me directly mm -hmm. how he feels about that. Thank you. Um, do you have any like comments or messages for? Um, Sophia University students, if you have some? Oh, Cassie, for university students. Well, I would say, follow your dream. <laughs> Even if your dream is not realized perfectly and turns out very, very strangely in a way that you didn't expect. Live, live that dream as, it's, as it plays out in your life. <laughs> it may be, turn out to be completely different from what you expected. Mm. Thank you so much. That was like such a strong message. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have anything that you want to mention before we end this session? So, uh, well, I, first of all, thank you for for uh, arranging this type of program. I'm uh, I'm very happy to be able to introduce Father Rupe and not only and introduce him to you and to uh, be stimulated by your questions. To, to recall from my memory what I know about him or what I experienced. And to the, to the students, yes, I would say make good friends while you are students. And select your friends for, you can't always select your friends, but sometimes you can. people that you can 
talk to you deeply about your dreams <laughs> and not what you would like to do with your life. Be careful. It's an important part of your of your young life as a student. <clears throat> Don't neglect it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I personally um, am so honored to be here as a um, kind of like a representative of um, a Sophia University student and also am from a the um, Arupa International Residence, just a dorm of, uh, of this university. Mm -hmm. And even though my dormitory was named after um, Father Arupa, I didn't really know about him, so it was mm -hmm. great, a great opportunity for me to get to know about him and also about you and your relationship with him. And yeah, it was also stimulating and inspiring for me as well. Yes. And even though I'm not really a Christian, but I know some of those lessons and teachings. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Yes, you're uh, One thing I regret of my own university days or younger days is I didn't keep a diary. Mm. <laughs> I wish that I had. Because uh, otherwise, it helps you to notice important things that happen in your life. There may not be much of importance for maybe weeks or months, the same, same sort of thing, but eventually there will be some important things that come up and, and you will realize their importance better if you keep a diary. Mm. So do you recommend us to keep a diary? Well, some kind of, maybe, maybe you don't write every day, but at least write uh, a number of times a year or so. <coughs> I only uh, have done it when I'm kind of forced to do it. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I should have done more. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Maybe I'll call it the end for this session. And thank you so much. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yes, that's right. Christmas is coming. Yes. Yeah. So to all. <laughs> To, all, uh, to anyone who is watching this or listening, I wish you a Merry Christmas and I, I hope that, uh, that our conversation will be encourage, encourage you to uh, live your life, live your dreams as Father Arupe did and uh, as, uh, as the two of us no doubt would like to do also. And get to know God, our Father. As Jesus said, God is your Father. And he himself said, I am with you all days, even to the end of time. That Jesus is with us in his spirit. And uh, as Father Arupe uh, writes sometimes in his, there are sections from his memoirs which are quoted in books like this. You can see that he was constantly sensitive to what God wanted him to do. And, and God does not usually uh, give commands, but leads us by suggestions, by the people we meet, and the events that happen in our life. And to, uh, to be a sensitive to those, not to let them slip by and be forgotten, 
as I say, it's good to keep a little journal or diary or whatever you want to call it, and and have some friends that you can talk about these th your dreams with. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.